Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So I hadn't touched the Comey and Trump issue um, because I thought it was, if I'm being honest, somewhat blown out of proportion. It, it's I heard all these sensational stories like the oligarchs are fighting and deep state, you know, battle of the deep state. Trump grabs Comey by the balls and rips him off and feeds it to him, solidifying his power base. Like, it was so sensational. I'm not a fan of this term, deep state, because it's I think it's mystifying natural processes. Like, yeah, I think it's solidifying natural processes. Like, mystifying natural processes. Like, so, it, think of it this way. You, you often hear me talk about realities. So when, I, so when I'm talking about a reality, think of it as a space to which a group of people dwell is not necessarily observable to outside reality or outside influence. Now, when I mean observable, I just mean the flavor of it. It's not necessarily understood by the people outside that context. Think of it as if you go to a church service. Say you haven't been in 20, 30 years. Say you're an atheist. Now, I'm not an atheist. I went to a church service with my mom recently. And I sat there like, these people are man, these people are nuts. I thought these people were nuts. It's not within my context. They're within their own reality frame. I am not in that reality frame. So to me, this seems absolutely bonkers. The progressive thing with Jordan, same thing. The DSC trial, same thing. There's a group of people who bear their consciousness upon it. And those people unite, forming a particular reality of sorts. Now, yes, anybody can join that particular reality, but they have to be interested to join that particular reality. If they're not interested, it's not going to make sense. It's, it's almost like it's off a wavelength. Um, think of it in a more personal way. Your family dynamic. When you go home for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, what is it like at your household? Nobody else can touch that. Nobody else understands what that means. You and your family are a unit in that sense, and you and your family are distinct in that particular sense. It's like a signature. Um, and not just that, each of you in that particular context, meaning each of you in that particular reality, experiences that reality in a slightly different way. There's no way to know that each of you are experiencing the exact same reality. It's fascinating when you think about it. Yes, all of these things belong to one particular reality, and yet each person in that particular reality, in that overarching reality, is experiencing it in a slightly different way. It's fascinating. Now, beyond that point, so if we're aware of these different realities, each particular person existing in their own reality, and they add themselves to larger realities, whatever those realities are, progressive, Republican, Democrat, ladies groups, the pussy hat wearers, whatever, whatever that reality they wish to enter themselves into. You also have other realities that are more competitive, like political and like economic. So the capitalistic system is a reality unto itself. It's a game space. That game space, just like any other game space, has contours and incentives associated with the game space. The political apparatus also is a game space. Similar to the capitalistic game space where you maximize profit in politics, your goal is to maximize power. Your crew power. Power is the thing that allows you to enforce your will through legislation. Through law, which is the point. You're not taking all of the bumps and the bruises of being a politician just for the sake of being a politician. The goal is to actually get shit done. The problem is, it's difficult to tell whether the economic system ends and the political system begins. This is somewhat of a side point, but so I'm not going to necessarily go that route, but it's difficult to tell where those two things end. Ultimately, though, the politician wants to accrue more power. That's his goal. You have a situation with Donald Trump. You have a situation with Comey. Donald Trump wants to know, can I trust you? You're dicking around with this investigation in Russia. Can I trust you? Any answer other than yes, even if it's a slow yes, is not an answer. I would wager that this boils down more to anything else than personalities. This is not so much a war in the deep state in as much as Trump saying, can I trust you? If you're investigating me in Russia, then I can't trust you. The problem is, it raises an eyebrow. It's like, whoa, whoa, he just fired the guy who was investigating him for Russia. Is there something there in Russia that Trump is trying to hide? So yes, it raises an eyebrow. But raising an eyebrow doesn't necessarily mean that there's any fire there. Uh, and there's no way to know if there's fire there, at least not right away. All I'm getting at is, it makes perfect sense to me that an individual would say, 
I want the FBI director to be somebody I can trust. If I can't trust that person, I don't want that person in that office. Comey also has another black mark against him. Comey can't, get, look, Comey can't take, get a break. He can't satisfy anybody. He's in a all right, precarious situation. Trump, of course, wanting him to lock up Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton should have been locked up. Based on Comey's own testimony, Hillary Clinton should have been locked up. So, bake that into the cake. The fact that he didn't lock her up, what? And then Comey turns around and starts an investigation. Now, mind you, the investigation should have taken place because if these things about Russia are coming up, even though I think these things are bogus, whatever, you, it's government. It goes through a particular process. They're doing an investigation. It looks a little weird that he fires him. So I understand people kind of raising their eyebrow like, whoa, you just fired Comey. Are you firing Comey because you're trying to solidify some kind of power base? Yes. Yes, it's the job of a politician to solidify his power base. That's what they do. It's called power. It's your accruing power. It's not crazy. That's natural as natural can be. The problem is the investigation. They were looking into Russia. And is it, did he get rid of Comey because of Russia? That's the you know, the Hufflepuff. Um, maybe, maybe not. To me, this is political theater. Is Trump, if Trump didn't trust Comey, is Trump the type of guy who would get rid of Comey? Trump impresses, it, put it this way, Trump looks to me to be the type of person who, if he didn't necessarily trust you in that role, he would just get you out that role. There may not be any underlying thought beyond that point. Um, I don't trust you. I don't trust you at all. You didn't lock her up. You're supposed to lock her up. You should have locked her up. That's the other point. That's the other question. What does this mean for investigations at this point? Like, are they reopening investigations into the Clinton thing, the Clinton scandal? That would be mind-blowing. That would be mind-blowing. Like, the fact that they're getting rid of Comey, what does it mean now for the FBI? And what does it mean for the direction of the FBI? That's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. For that matter, does the investigation into Trump come to a crawl now that Comey is out? That's an interesting question. I mean, the only thing we have at this point are questions. Yes, we know Trump had a conversation with Comey about the Russia thing. Yes, we know Trump asked him about a loyalty issue, meaning, can I trust you? The New York Times has a story saying Comey, quote unquote, demurred. He demurred. That was enough to get him fired. Um, Look, I, I, the point I'm getting at is, in the political space, in that game space, your goal is to maximize power. You don't maximize power by having people in your camp that you can't necessarily completely and full-throatedly trust. That's not how you get power. That's not how you approve power. If you're talking about just a cutthroat means of staying in a particular position, then yeah, you fire Comey. It just is what it is. If I can't trust you, if you're investigating me, if I'm asking you, hey, do I have your loyalty? And you're a little sheepish in giving me that loyalty. What am I to do? What am I to do? It is natural as natural can be for Trump to get rid of Comey if he can't necessarily give him his loyalty. Now, from that's Trump's perspective, though. From the higher narrative of, well, wait a minute, should you get rid of the FBI director just because he's not telling you he's just going to toe the line? That's a different question. I'm saying, I don't necessarily think this is, quote-unquote, the deep state fighting or the oligarchs at war. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's what it is. I think these are natural forces of the game space. Each person in the game space tries to accrue as much power as they themselves can accrue, including the President of the United States, because he wants to stay in his particular position. And if he's being attacked with this thing of Russia, this Russia smear that Hillary Clinton drew up, then he needs to do stuff to mitigate the fact that he's being attacked by the Russia thing. It's natural behavior based upon the incentives of the model. The model being, I need to stay in power. I need to mitigate the attacks that they're laying upon me. How do I mitigate the attacks that they're laying upon me? Who can I trust in this administration? Comey, can I trust you? Ugh. What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do in that situation? He demurred. What are you supposed to do? I'm saying, look, and you know, I don't necessarily like Trump. I'm just making this point that from a contextual standpoint, if you're asking the guy in your camp, do I have your loyalty? And the guy is somewhat demurred. What are you supposed to do with that? What are you supposed to do with that? Just as an individual. I am making this argument that, yes, from an individual perspective, Trump got rid of Comey not because of any kind of deep state stuff. It's not that oligarchs are fighting or it's not deep space, you know, deep state um, mayhem. You can trust the guy. 
It was an issue of loyalty. It was a personal thing. It was a one-to-one -one from one man to the next. Can I trust you? No. At the very least, the answer was slow coming. Then, yeah, you need to go. You need to go. I need to give you your pink slip. I need people who I can trust around me. That's why I didn't do the story, because ultimately I thought that this was essentially the story. These people exist in a game space in which they try to accrue more power. Well, how do you accrue more power? How do you ensure that your power base is stable? How do you ensure you stay in that position? And how do you mitigate things that are used to attack you? Well, mitigate that stuff by getting rid of the people who are disloyal to you. And granted, I'm saying disloyal from Trump's perspective in that sense. Um, it's just a little... It just raises an eyebrow when the president axes the FBI director when the FBI director was doing an investigation into the president. That's all I'm saying. From Trump's perspective, yes, it makes sense to get rid of him because this is an issue of loyalty. From the perspective of everybody else, ugh, man, I wish he would have did it. I wish he would have did it. Because ultimately, it makes him look a particular way, whether or not that way is accurate or not. Look, everybody's betrayal of reality is going to be somewhat off. I'm trying to give the perspective of Trump and the perspective of everybody else looking at it saying, whoa, you just asked the guy who's doing an investigation into your ties with Russia. Yes, it looks bad. Yes, it may be bad. And, and me saying that I think Trump did this purely for personal reasons of, I can't trust you. That may not be true. I think it's true, but that may not be true. There may have been more to it than that. This is one of those things where you just kind of have to wait and see. Um... But to me, this was more just palace intrigue. It was, you know, political theater. It was more comical than anything else. Trump fires Comey. Trump fires Comey. War in the deep state. The oligarchs are fighting themselves. Like, it was just this one thing, one sensational story after the other. Um, so, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about it a little bit because I kind of want to get away from this mystifying of this quote-unquote deep state. People function in ways for their own power needs. How can I accrue more power? How can I... It's like the capitalist model, but instead you're talking about political clout. How can I accrue more power in politics? What positions do I need to take? Who do I need to associate myself with? What positions do I need to get into that would allow me to prosper, to persist myself, to get more? It's just natural human inclination for success based upon the model to which we exist, the incentives in that model. The incentives in the, in the um, political model are power. So you do things to try to accrue more power, the more influence. It's natural as natural can be. You can call it the deep state, but that's really all that we're talking about. A group of people who, for the most part, have decided. Well, it's almost like there's a natural way of things in the government itself. Um, and I need to make a quick side on this. But understand, that's, those systems are not permanent. Like, understand, I, I, you, you need to understand me on this. Those systems change the way the moment that people say we want something different. Honestly, it does. It's it's just that simple. It, it and I'm not saying that it's necessarily easy. I'm just saying yes, it's just that simple. When people make the decision of this is the base level I'm willing to exist. Well, that's the base level they're going to be willing to exist. When people in mass makes the determination of all right, we're sick of these guys doing this. We're sick of spending a trillion dollars on the military. We're sick of Having these trains that are just ancient when they have these bullet trains everywhere else. We're sick of having our roads looking like hell with these potholes. We want to use the money that we ourselves accrue for the things involving us. Not murdering people abroad, not putting in people's bank accounts, but for us. When people make that choice, and they, in unison, in mass, make that choice, then the world changes. Up until that point, talking about the deep state is irrelevant. Those guys are going to do what they do because the public allows them to do what they do. The public needs to essentially take the reins. The public believes that it doesn't have the power to take the reins. Because ultimately, it's look, it boils down to this. One person can wield a lot of power. But one person can never wield as much power as masses. The problem is, masses requires consent, meaning it requires agreement. So that particular individual is functioning at the behest of him, himself. He's unified in his decision because he's the only one who's making that decision. The masses themselves have to actually come together, agree, and to some degree subordinate themselves to a different cause in order to confront whatever they see as being unfair. And it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do. Yes, the masses are a massive force. It's almost like gravity. 
yes, gravity can be a massive force when you're getting at these massive, massive items in space. But on an individual small level, it's tiny. You need that massive force if you want to make any particular change. The deep state is what the deep state is. Politics is what politics is. But those people, for the most part, has given up the reins. They themselves believe that they no longer have the reins to control that political apparatus. Those people are mistaken. Those people do have the means to control the political apparatus. They choose not to. There's a difference in those things. Now, you can get into the reasons why they choose not to, but, but that is a choice. And I want people to understand. People like to say, oh, these politicians are this or that. Yeah, but to some degree, you're making a choice to allow them to be this or that. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. When you have people in masses that come together and say, okay, we're tired of this. This deep state shit. It goes away. These structures are actually pretty fickle. It's, it's, not, it's not like there's some edifice somewhere. This is just people in positions. These positions are conceptual. Government is a conceptual construct. It's not a physical building somewhere. Yes, they have buildings associated with government, but government itself is a construct. It's conceptual. These things are somewhat fickle. Those things will fall away the moment that the public makes a decision for something else. You can't have a political revolution and you can't change those things. But first, you need the public to realize that the public can change those things. That is the hardest thing in the world to do. To get across to somebody that, hey, I know you feel disempowered. And yes, as an individual, you can't necessarily solve these issues on the level of the problem. But, as a collective, you agree with a lot of these people on a lot of these issues. And yes, I know that it looks like those guys are goblins, and it looks like those guys are absolutely against you on a host of things. But when you get into polling, and you talk to people about one issue after the next, those people, for the most part, are progressive. They're further to the left than even the Democratic Party. You can move the country on that. You just need those people to know that A, they are that way, B, that they can't actually move the country that way, and C, that they take the reins to try to actually do that. Workers of the world unite. Unite. Um, yeah, that, that's a second point. Uh, that's somewhat off the rails, but... Yeah, that's somewhat off the rails. Uh, I just look at the situation, I look at the world, and I say, God, man, it doesn't have to be this way. And I, I have no way to impart to other people that thing, that, that view. Like, and when you see that view that way, you think to yourself, well, we can construct the world to be whatever we want. Why are we can living in this particular way? It gets like aggravating. It gets like an aggravating when you're seeing like the things that take place and you're like, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. You're persistently caught in the situation of thinking it does not have to be this way. I know these people think it has to be this way. I know they think they're stuck. They're making a choice. They're making a choice. Alright guys, if you enjoyed the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and you can always support the work through Patreon.